Well, thank you all for coming today, and thank you to the legislators who are standing here with me today uh, from both chambers of the General Assembly who've come to the table in good faith to fight for fairness. Thanks also to the advocates, some of whom are here, who've been fighting in the communities for years to make our tax system more fair and to ask the wealthiest people in the state of Illinois to pay more. Um, after more than a decade of legislators and advocates working to bring a fair tax to Illinois, today is an important next step to give voters a choice about whether the wealthy will pay more and 97% of families will pay the same or less. In the past few weeks, we have proposed tax rates, we've begun negotiations on those tax rates, and we created a calculator for families to understand how the rates will impact them. You can find that calculator at www.illinois.gov slash fair tax calculator. In the coming weeks, we'll continue to have conversations with members of the General Assembly, with organizations and advocates, and the public as we move forward this session. The legislation that was filed today will give voters a choice to amend the state's constitution to create a fair tax system. This amendment will remove the requirement that all taxpayers pay the same rate, regardless of their income. It will let us adopt a system that is more fair to the middle class. Most importantly, I've said from the very beginning that it doesn't make sense that I pay the same rate as a teacher or a first responder. Today we are taking a first step, a next step, to fix that unfairness. I want to be clear. The administration welcomes debate and negotiation. Conversations with legislators on both sides of the aisle and organizations and advocates across the political spectrum are well underway and we look forward to continuing those conversations. And for those who will oppose a fair tax by waging a misinformation campaign, it is transparent that you are defending an unfair status quo that benefits the wealthiest Illinoisans instead of offering your own ideas for how to fix our state's problems. Fact checkers have made this abundantly clear. When opponents call the fair tax a so-called jobs tax, know that this baseless claim has already been rated as false. When opponents fearmonger about an exodus of residents, understand that an independent organization just yesterday pointed out that, quote, a trove of federal data on Illinois taxpayers undercuts predictions of a stampede for the exits among residents of means. What I have proposed is a fair income tax that protects our middle class and asks only the wealthiest 3% of this state to pay more. We're committed to voting on the merits of this proposal with a debate that will be based on facts. I urge opponents to do the same. So instead of deceiving voters, I again urge opponents to tell Illinoisans how they would address our state's multi-billion dollar budget deficit. Their other options are stark. Cut schools, universities, community colleges, social service agencies, and public safety by 15%. Or raise taxes on everyone, from those making $30,000 to those making a million dollars, by 20%. Since announcing our fair tax proposal, I've had the pleasure of visiting communities throughout the state. Communities like El Dorado and Moline, Decatur and Belleville, Chicago and Springfield, of course. I've met with families and workers who understand this proposal will only ask those making more than $250,000 to pay more. That's 3% of Illinoisans. They understand that this will provide much needed property tax relief to homeowners across the state. They understand that this, this will provide a new child tax credit for working families raising children. What I will say to members of the General Assembly as they consider this constitutional amendment is this. Let the people vote. We have a constitutional amendment process that ultimately puts this decision to the voters. It's time to let the people of Illinois, our taxpayers, 
decide. Thank you, and now some of our legislators are going to speak before we take your questions. I'd like to first call on Senator Don Harmon, the sponsor in the Senate. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much, Governor. Uh, Earlier today, I filed an amendment to Senate Joint Resolution Constitutional Amendment Number 1. It is simply a, a slightly more lawyerly way of saying what all of the prior versions of the amendment have said, that Illinois should have the tools to adopt a fair income tax, where lower rates apply to lower income levels and higher rates apply to higher income levels. As the Governor said, this is something we've been working on for the better part of 10 years. What's different now is Governor Pritzker, a governor brave enough to say this is the solution for our state and to put his considerable political capital behind this effort. So, Governor, I'm very grateful on behalf of all of us who've been toiling for so many years to get this done. Uh, we're not done yet, but the Senate stands ready to, to move. Senator, uh, our Majority Leader Kimberly Lightford is here, the Chair of our Senate uh, Revenue Committee, Toy Hutchinson, uh, one of our budgeteers, uh, Senator Andy Menar, Senator McGuire, Senator Hunter. We're sta we stand ready, and we're gonna begin the process this week of reading the, the amendment so that we'll be in a position to pass it uh, as soon as we can. Looking forward to the work. Uh, we've been partnering with the House, and I'm gonna turn this over now to Representative Mike Zaleski, one of the lead negotiators from the House. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, the House Democratic Caucus stands ready to work with the Governor and the, set, the Senate on a fair tax proposal that brings 97% uh, of the people either a tax cut or a tax stability in the state that desperately needs it. The last four years have shown that our current tax system does not work for anybody. It's been four years of devastation. It's been four years of us trying to climb out of a hole, a needless hole. The governor has brought forth in good faith the necessary effort to bring everyone together to try to bring forth a tax proposal that will work for everybody, a tax proposal that will be fair, and a tax proposal that will bring um, much needed stability to the state of Illinois. I'm joined by um, our lead negotiators, Representative Leader Art Turner, Representative uh, Rob Martwick, uh, Representative Robin Gable, Representative Carol Ammons, Representative Mark, Mark Walper, Walker, and Representative Kalish. Uh, they stand ready to work with the governor. The House Democratic Caucus stands ready to work with the governor, and we look forward to enacting a fair tax in Illinois. And with that, I think the governor and ourselves will be happy to answer any questions. Well, my constituents are going to vote me out if I support this because they don't trust you. They don't trust you to keep it the way it is. And down the line, it's going to just be more and more of us uh, paying a higher tax. Are you running for public office? Because I, that, that would be, I, I want to know about that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, let me point out that uh, the problems that we face in the state, the fiscal challenges that we face, have been decades in the making, and that it is time finally to address those challenges. Uh, I put forward a plan um, and work together with people, listen to their ideas about how we should address them, and a plan that will protect the middle class in our state and protect those who are striving to get to the middle class, in fact, providing tax relief for many of them, for most of them. And only 3% of the people of the state will pay a little bit more, and it allows us to overcome the significant challenges. I outlined some of those in my budget speech a uh, month and a half, two months ago. Um, one of the points that I raised was that there is roughly a $3.2 billion structural deficit that the state faces, and we have about $15 billion of unpaid bills, some of which have been refinanced, but it's still debt that the state owes as a result of the budget crises that we faced over the last few years, and many years, frankly, of not truly balancing the budget. So I took many of the items out of the budget that I thought didn't make it totally transparent, an example being the James R. Thompson Center selling that year after year, um, so that you could see, in fact, what the challenges are of the state. Um, and then I have put forward a plan for overcoming that, and this, this plan helps us do that. It's, a, it's, an important, it's an important plan for us to move this state past our fiscal challenges so that we can grow jobs and grow the economy. If it's governor, you said the top three richest percent uh, of the state, and if it's true that you're open to negotiation, I wonder then what you think of Senator Dan McConkey's proposal to the uh, Constitution that he says would protect the middle class uh, by imposing a supermajority uh, threshold before raising taxes down the line. Is that a fair negotiation? What do you make of this proposal? 
Well, there was actually no negotiation about that. It was just a, something that they introduced um, on their own. Uh, the fact is that they haven't proposed to you how they're actually going to overcome the budget deficit of the state or how they're going to pay the bills of the state. They're just demagoguing this issue. Well, you, said, you, said that, you said that you will, uh, we, we heard the same thing about reaching across the aisle and negotiating on minimum wage. You could say this just got rammed through the, the, the Democratic proposal never got negotiated. Why should we believe you now that this will be negotiated? Well, how many months have my doors been open? Have I had conversations with people um, across the aisle, you know, informal conversations with Republicans because they won't formally show up with proposals, uh, but many of the people behind me and others in the legislature have been willing to discuss the provisions of the constitutional amendment, the provisions of the rates, um, and in fact, that's what's been going on, a lot of conversation and negotiation. There's, there's budget, several, budget analyses, several analyses uh, of the top end on income shows that it rises and falls all the time because of Wall Street uh, fortunes, what have you. Um, you've said over and over that you wanted stability with this tax plan of yours. Uh, others are saying this may not be so stable are of a revenue source. Are you concerned at all? about the actual stability of relying on the top income earners uh, to fund the government? Well, I'm always concerned about the possibility that there might be a recession. Um, which would affect, of course, the revenues of the state. And it does with a flat tax system, too. So that is something that I think we all should be concerned about. But the fact is that this is the best way to overcome our challenges. Um, it, it, the, the fact is we also need to protect the middle class. I mean, that's really the goal here. Because the alternatives here are, as I say, cutting discretionary spending in the state, and that means universities and colleges, our, our schools, our public safety, by 15%. 15%. I don't, haven't heard any proposal by the Republicans that would meet that threshold. Yeah, who, who and, says, and, and raise it. The alternative is also raising taxes on everybody by 20%. The Republicans don't come with solutions. They only demagogue the issue. Okay, but Moody says if you're going to do this, fine, you're going to do this, but you should have a cushion built in, a rainy day fund, a right. significant one, so when revenues fall, which they will eventually, Yes. At the top end, that you've got something to replace it with so you don't have to go and raise taxes yet again on the wealth. Listen, the only way you can create a rainy day fund is when you overcome the deficit that exists. Question, and I want to. The question that I was getting to yes, yeah. was how big of a rainy day fund do you think you're going to need once you pass this into law? Well, again, we've got to overcome the existing fiscal challenge in order to even create a rainy day fund. I also want to point out, and I don't want to call on him uh, or make you all turn your cameras, but standing next to you is the guy who talked most about a rainy day fund for the state when he was controller of the state. He is the deputy governor of the state today, and he oversees our budget efforts. Um, and the fact is that I am very much focused on stabilizing our finances, helping us weather any potential recession that we have, but immediately we've got to get past the challenge that we've got. And that's, that's only going to be done if we have a long-term solution, and that's what this graduated income tax, this fair tax system will do. Is that going to be throwing a party for Mark Smith? Are taxpayer dollars going to be funding that party? I couldn't hear you. What, what did you say? We have heard that there is going to be a party thrown by Aunt Martha for Mark Smith. Oh, no, I don't know anything about taxpayer dollars being involved in that. I think the people of Aunt Martha's probably are sorry to see him go, and they want to throw a party for him <laughs> as he goes through. Can you have the business community take your 8 to 5 ratio? You didn't have to include that in the new uh, language. Should they take that as an olive branch? The, what community? I didn't hear what you said. The business community. Should they take the 8 to 5 ratio? Well, it's in the Constitution today. It's a protection, certainly, for businesses, for corporations um, that's been in the Constitution for some time now. Um, yeah, I think that it does protect uh, businesses in the state. Um, and, and frankly, as you know, about 70 percent of the businesses in the state will actually get a tax break as a result of the plan that we're putting forward, because many of them are small businesses. There's been nothing for next year or the year after that, most of it at least. What's your plan to stabilize the finances looking at next year without more revenue? Well, you saw that I put forward a balanced budget for the state for 2020. You've seen the cannabis tax, the plastic bag tax, the... Uh, it's all in the works. As you know, budgets take time to, to work out. I put forward a plan. The legislature gets to opine about that plan. They have their own ideas that they want to add into the mix. And by May 31st, the goal here is to have a balanced budget for 2020. That's what I put forward. I know that's what everybody here is what's, working what's toward. What's the plan if the voters do not approve of a progressive tax? 
Well, we'll certainly have to look at all the alternatives, but uh, let me say this. Should, should I challenge, challenge people know that they can have a choice? I put my idea forward, and my idea is the one that protects the middle class and protects people who are striving to get to the middle class. I challenge Republicans and anybody else to please put forward a plan that you think gets us past the challenge of the fiscal instability of the state and paying the bills of the state that were racked up during that terrible two years of a budget crisis. Uh, to put that plan forward, and if you can't put that plan forward, then you better vote for this. If you get the progressive tax plan through, would it also be fair, would you be open to considering this idea of adding a higher threshold to raise taxes on, say, people under $250,000 down the line? So should that be a higher hurdle than just a simple majority? I put forward my plan for, for balancing the budget and for you know who I think should be protected, and that's the middle class. People who are making $250,000 and less, in fact, will get a, a slight tax relief or significant tax relief, depending on how much money you make and how many children you have. Should it remain a 50% simple majority vote to raise those tax brackets down the line, or would you be open to raising that? Well, well, clearly, this is, these are choices that legislatures have made for 200 years in Illinois since 1818, uh, choices that legislatures all over the nation make. Um, this is something that le future legislatures and governors will make about what the rates should be. But, but protecting the rates when they get there, writing them into the Constitution, for example, or creating a higher threshold also means you can't lower taxes. And I think that this legislature and future legislatures ought to have the choices, all the choices available to them, you know, the future is unknown, and so you want to make sure that they have the options that are available in the Constitution. Look at all the constitutions of states around Illinois. If you look at those constitutions, they too have all the same choices that Illinois has. And I, I believe that the, the responsibility lies in protecting the middle class. That's what this plan is all about. That's what everybody here stands for. Representative Governor Bailey said this is class warfare, pitting 97% against 3%. Uh, Representative Bailey said it's socialistic. I asked Representative Durkin, he said all of the above. Yeah. Well, again, where's their plan? Tell me where their plan is. And tell me, do they not believe in protecting the middle class? Because that's what we're doing. We're protecting the middle class. That's what this plan is about. Philosophically, philosophically do you believe that Illinoisans, adult Illinoisans, mm -hmm. should have the right to grow cannabis in their own homes? I think it's less a philosophical issue, but I understand your, your, your question. Should there be home grow is really your question. And I don't think it's a philosophical question about whether it should just be an open right for anybody to open their own farm in their basement. Um, it's really more a question about, it's, it's really more, it's really more, it's really more, it's really more. It's, it's, thank you. Thank you very much. She, she, people should have home grow but the question is how much? That's really the... Thank you. Thank you.